you join me on one of my Lincolnshire syndicates. It's a, a syndicate of two lakes, both of which are fished um, at certain times of year, which over the coming months, we are going to do a bit on both. But at this present time, you join me on the smaller out of the two. It's around 12 to 15 acres with a, a carp stock up to 60, lowest 45. And the biggest out of that stock goes to mid 40 right time of year. So I'm going to take you for a walk around now and we'll, we'll have a look at all the swims and, and where I caught fish from in the previous months. I started on here in August, we're now the 1st of October. I have been quite successful in those couple of months. So like I say, we're going to have a walk around. We're going to have a look to see if we can see any fish activity about something to move on to. And in the meantime, we'll have a talk about the catchers. So let's get cracking. Fish is swim last weekend. Um, sort of had two rods out onto the, well, one directly to the island and one just off at the bottom of the slope. And then one over the far margin, sort of three or four odd lengths off a snag over there. I'd seen some fizzing up the night before. Um, and then uh, next morning, we sort of had a bit of a nightmare to be fair. The middle rod on the drop off of the islands, you know, it's rocketed off and uh, it's carted all the way around to this right hand margin and just slightly got snagged. So I ran around and got uh, the nearest bow and on the front of it there's a metal buckle underneath that you tie your rope to, tuck it up to hook up. Anyway, I'd gone out and it literally just on a branch, I'd unclipped it from this branch and the fish had come back out and it had gone sort of over that right hand rod that I had fishing over on the far margin and um, the the line for that rod had caught under this buckle and anyway this rod bleeping away on the bank and I thought I'd absolutely wipe that rod out if I'm honest with you, it, it sort of loop round it and I sort of I had to sort of get the fish in the net before I could do any more with it. I didn't want to risk losing the fish so got the fish in the net, that was a nice um, 28 and a half pound mirror and uh, anyway, un up the boat from the line thought oh that rod's done with sort of thing it's knackered which I was I was back game on sort of thing for that for that rod uh, real confident on that one anyway sort of on the bank weighed photographed that other fish just walking back to the water and that right and rod's absolutely steamed off um, sort of Felt, so, felt a good solid fish, slight kite, no head banging, just nice and slow, solid pumping. And uh, it weeded me up three quarters of the way across. I felt, see big plumes of fizz coming up and it's like burying it, sending the weed. And I thought rather than just, you know, I, I kept the, the strain on a little bit, a bit of tension to see if it would move, but it was absolutely solid. So took to the boat, went out and um, yeah, fish come up. I, I recognised it as a as one I've caught previous, maybe four or five weeks ago. Um, so again, big mass of weed come up with it. Fish was below the weed, wanting direct contact with it. So I was having to put the rod down, strip a bit of weed off, and it was a bit of a nightmare to be fair. But yeah, eventually uh, I was sort of like strip a bit of weed off, pick the rod up, reel a bit of slack up, trying to get a bit of tightness into it again, and um, eventually it. I'd managed to pull the fish into the weed so then it stopped sort of fighting if you like anyway my lead cores come up through the weed and I'm sort of there's that much weed I couldn't really do anything more with it other than to hand line it um, so yeah I've got this fish absolutely powering about and I'm holding this lead core and just letting a little bit of slack out as and when it needed it and pulling it back and eventually I got it up to the surface and it went in the went in the net first time of asking but yeah buzzing with that that was uh 34 10 that one one's just rolled now just stuck its head out just out here about where i saw the fizzing this morning so there is fish still about which is a good sign i think the swim the swimmer fish last night i saw uh i've been trickling a bit of bait in there and 
sort of no no signs last night, which I was quite surprised. I was, I was expecting to get some bites this morning, but to no avail. So I am looking at a move. So I'm gonna have a good walk around this morning and see what we can see and go from there, really. Right, this is a swim that I caught the biggest fish that we know of in the lake so far. Um, I was actually fishing the swim next door mainly. I'd done the night in there, three rods on a spot. And uh, at first light, one of the rids, rods ripped off, which resulted in a 26 mirror. Um, rather than put that rod back out, I had another two on the spot, so I didn't want to disturb the area. I thought there's two rods still rocking, fish were showing, fizzing, so I don't want to disturb them. Anyway, I stood at the water's edge from the next swim, glancing down at the lake, and I noticed the fish stick its head up. So I've walked down, stood in here 10, 15 minutes, and saw another two go over, and one of them a, a good one. So I've ran back to the swim, new rig, fresh bait, come back down with just a buzzer in the net, and uh, just stood about waiting and watching. Um, and one just subtly stuck its head out again. So pinged a single onto it, sorted the rod out, got it all in place, clipped the bobbin on, slack lines, went back up. As I've gone back to my next swim, my second out of the third has ripped off. Again, another 20, mid 20, I think it was. So sorted that fish out, sacked it up, Gave me mate a phone call that was on one of the other pits. Says, I've got a couple of fish. If you can uh, get past your bite time and come to me and have some photos and weigh in. Anyway, sat back, flicked the kettle on, and then uh, just, literally just finishing my brew. And the sounder box has let out a couple of bleeps. I've looked at my two rods in front of me, nothing's happened. So I've legged it down to this single rod. And uh, I was fishing tight, tight clutches because it is quite weedy out here so all they're going to do is you know cart into the weed and if need be if you can't get them moving jump in the boat and go and land them safely so i picked up the rod instantly felt a big fish um, which is carted slightly to the left and then weeded me up solid anyway i stood there for a minute or so just keeping the pressure on no movement whatsoever so i put the rod down on my buzzer, slacking the clutch lightly, but still so the line was tight. And then if the fish did come out while I was fetching the boat, it wouldn't, you know, rip the rod in or so to speak. So it would just kite to the next weed bed. Anyway, I've legged it up the bank, jumped in the boat, down. Grabbed the rod, grabbed the net in the boat. And I'm, uh, I'm reeling myself out to this fish. And I'm thinking, please, please be one eye, please be one eye. It was a fish I'd lost previously four or five weeks prior. And I actually lost it at the net, which I'll tell you about when we get to the next swim. Anyway, I'm out there playing this fish and my mates come walking up the bank. And he's like, wee boy, you're into one. I says, yeah, man, yeah, it's weeded me up. And anyway, he, he started filming on his phone, what have you. Anyway, I've got this fish I've sort of got above it and I'm pulling it up through the depths and it, this fish has come out and I thought, F me, it's, you know, it's the one, it's one eye. And a um, load of weed around it, I'm stripped, stripped a bit of weed off, managed to get in direct contact with this fish and it's, it didn't really go too bad to be fair. I thought it was then going to go on a mad tussle, but yeah, just a, a few bobs around the bow and, and slip the net under it. Uh, so I sort of pulled the net towards me, I just wanted to confirm, rolled it on its side to see the, the one eye and it was her light, so yeah, let out a big scream, one eye sort of thing, I was absolutely buzzing, buzzing to set a record straight because she'd done me the few weeks prior. Miles, one eye, one a one and oh! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Some fish in it, yeah. Mm. Long. Looks well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does look well. Looks nice, nice and healthy still. The water's not been all that clear, mm. has it, until recently? So, it's got a bit of boiling, it's gone there. At least you know what you had it as. A bit of yellow. <laughs> Get that tail a bit wetter. Bailey, come. Oh. Bailey. <laughs> Lady, the back. That's mega, mate. Bailey. Yeah. Looks like mega. Got some more scars on it than they really. Dan looks mega. Off the roof. <laughs> It definitely looks darker though, doesn't it? Yeah, when I lifted it up, I thought it was fine, but it wasn't, I knew it wasn't fucking big. No, and a few even slow temperature like water over off the pitches. <laughs> I thought about it earlier, but I thought it'd go mardy because he's got his nice clothes on. You happy with that side? Thank you, my old gal. Tell Liam's fish to come pay me a visit tonight. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, man. Boom. Whoa, boy. <laughs> This takes us into the swim that I first fished on the lake. I was quite lucky to gain access uh, through a friend of mine to help him with a bit of fishing and what have you. Uh, he's in a wheelchair, so he struggles to do certain things, maybe a bit of baiting up for him and what have you. So he said to me, if you fancy it, you can jump on such and such lake with me and just do a bit of fishing. So. I, I jumped at the chance. It, for one, it was good to help him out in his fishing. Really good to see how he goes on, if I'm honest with you. He's, he's, a, he's a good angler and he's, he's caught a few along the way as well, which has been enjoyable to see. Anyway, so he says, he gave me like a week's notice to us coming on fishing. So I says, right, do you mind if I go down, <clears throat> get out in the boat, find a few spots and, uh, and put a bit of bait in for that forthcoming session? Um, so I'd, I'd come down that weekend armed with whoa, 20 kilo of boilie and similar sort of amounts in salt. Salt's always, when I'm pre-baiting I always add salt into my mix. I think it just, when they clear out the bait they'll always come back for that salt and they'll dig it and clean it and get your spots prepped for you if you like. So I'd gone out in the boat just with a lead rod and you know went round really. I could I could only fish so many swims away from him. So I chose up the far end of the lake and uh, I'd gone out and just just feeling about with a lead rod really. And it was real 
a lot of silt weed about and big weed beds. Anyway, I'd managed to find an area out there that when I was, I was dropping the lead, it was sort of silty, 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 and then a, a nice firm drop, so H block went there. Went a bit further out, maybe two or three metres past that, feeling about in that area. Still firm, another H block. And then again, side to side to see. And um, yeah, I, I filled it in that, that weekend, and I thought, that's gonna fish three rods, easily. Um, even re-chucking at night, you know, we had good skyline markers with the trees. So yeah, that was filled in. I was buzzing for the, for the weekend to come after. Even so forth that I came back on like the Wednesday, I gave them another 10 kilo. I knew there was, I knew there was on it. I'd, even that first day I'd put the bait out, I'd come back to the bank and sat about for an hour just watching. And I saw one stuck its head out. I thought, fucking hell, they're on it already. I wanted to get the rods there and then. Anyway, so like I say, I've come back in the week, baited up again, and then it come to the Friday that I was meeting Dan down here. We had two nights in front of us. Um, I got down late evening after work, and uh, sort of, as soon as I got out of the van, sort of stood here, just having a fag, watching out, and boom, one sloshed over, another one sloshed over. I thought, fucking hell, we're on, sort of thing. So I was out with the rods, wrapped them all up to the spots, banged the rods out, everything else was left until them rods were spot on, and I was happy with them. So rods were out, frolly up, kettle on, I had a barbecue with Dan, and then I said to him, right, I'm gonna go back down to the swim, I need to watch. So, come back down, and all evening, they were, they were sticking their heads out, they were fizzing, you know, going daft out there. I think there was quite a bit of bait still left, but they was on it, you know what I mean? And I buzzed all night, I was up through the night, you know, sort of waking up, looking at the rods, thinking, why ain't it gone, what's going on? Anyway, um, it wasn't till first light, I got my first bite. And it was, um, if I remember rightly, it was my left hand rod. And there was, there was no single bleats beforehand, it just full on churning, fucking peeling line from the spool. And it, it took me nigh on out to the island and carted right and then weeded me. And I thought, oh, sound, I'll jump in the boat. Anyway, at first I thought, I'll just try a bit of pressure first. And it started gradually moving out of this weed bed and then it didn't feel so heavy with the amount of weed. So I thought, oh, I'll be all right landing this from the bank. So I've literally played it all the way to the edge. And as it's, as it's got out here, it's obviously weeded up, weeds over its head, but I thought, decent fish, that sort of thing, buzzing. So I slipped the net under it. That ended up weighing 30 pound five. It was a, it was a fish gnome, um, but yeah, all the same, absolutely buzzing. First morning, 30 pounder but I felt I should have had more fish. With the amount that was showing the night before, I knew I had to do something different. And I was, that night I was fishing uh, stiff booms on Ronnie's. And I just maybe feel there was maybe slight, sat slightly wrong on the deck. And I think I, I could have, should have had more opportunities than what I had. So the following night, prep new rigs, longer up links, but supple. So if it would sat, sat over any debris, it would sit and it would fish. So next night come, but they didn't repeat the process of the night before, i.e. the showing. It was, it was really quiet to be fair. And I ended up getting a couple of tench uh, just before dark. And I thought, oh no, sort of tench are moved in. So <clears throat> plowed another couple of kilo out there with a stick in the area over all three rods. Tench seems quiet down, got my head down, good night's kip. Set me alarm for first light. Got up first light, brew on as you do, sat there supping. Anyway, about seven o'clock in the morning, right and rod pulled up tight and just tick, 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 slowly, slow. And it was, it was a typical big fish take. And uh, ticking a bit of line off, I've picked up, nice, solid, you know what I mean? It's kited round to the right. They always seem to kite into this big weed bed that's out here. So again, it's weeded me solid, but, after a bit of pressure, I managed to get it moving. Anyway, it's, it's pretty much dog on a lead all the way back to the bank and uh, I sort of shuffled the net forward, down, down low, trying, you know, trying to get this thing. And I'm, this weed bed's coming towards me, but the fish is sat just behind it. And I sort of thought, oh shit, I'm not in direct contact with it. So I just thought, I'm gonna have to try and net 
the whole lot of it for any chance of getting it in. Anyway, uh, I've managed to get the weed in the net and sort of half the fish. And I'm like giving it the old pancake shuffle over the net cord and the, the, the fish was literally half over that net cord. And bad luck, maybe hooked it slightly wrong, hook hold wasn't good enough. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it fell out the back of the net and I, I had the net full of weed, real heavy, couldn't do it about it. And it, it sort of righted itself and I looked at the fish and it was, it was a fish called one eye, the one that I mainly wanted coming on here. And I thought, second, night, uh, second morning, should I say, I could have had it. And I, I just watched it swim off dead slowly. Sort of lobbed the rod down as you do, you I was absolutely gutted. Sort of just went and sat on the bed chair for about 10 minutes, nearly roaring my eyes out. But I knew it was going to do another capture and I know I was going to set the record straight and I did. Right, so after the walk round earlier, we've come round this far side of the island, which I said I'd heard a fish early hours of the morning show. Seen quite a bit of activity around here, patches of fizzing going on, seen a couple of fish just slowly stick the nut out. So it was a case of back round to the plot, wrap up, stuff on the bower and round here. Um, two of the spots I had clips for anyway, I fished previous and caught fish off, so I know they're good to go. Um, I've just found another spot out in the area where we've seen some fizzing. So I've just uh, got all rigged up for the last rod to go in, in stiff on a long link, nice supple boom to sit over any debris. I'm gonna fire that out now and just uh, spread a bit of boily around the zone, you know, not tight, good spread, keep them moving about in between baits and uh, we should hopefully tag one. Right, it's evening time. I've watched the sun set behind the trees. Rods are in position. Fish to a silty gully in between two weed beds. I've scattered maybe a kilo, kilo and a half over them rods. Um, feeling confident for the evening. Seen quite a bit of fizzing, bit of activity this side of the island. A couple of fish stuck the nut out this afternoon. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens tonight. Well, the morning's come and bite time seems to have faded away, unfortunately. Um, the fish were quite active in the evening time and I did feel like I was in for a shout to be honest with you. Um, I've had most of my fish between 6.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning. So we've sat that time out now, it's, it's nearly 10 o'clock and uh, it looks quite dead if I'm honest with you. The weather has gone real cold this week, we've had some cold winds, quite a lot of rain. So I think maybe that's having a bit of an effect on the fishing but I'm not coming up with excuses. We all know that's how carp fishing is at times. I'm not going to grumble though for, for the little amount of time that I've done on here uh, in a couple of months fishing the, the odd weekend here and there. I've had some really nice fish um, up to just over scrape 40 which I'm sure we'll add a bit of video footage of them captures and overlay some pictures in this video. I hope you enjoy the pictures as much as I do looking back at them and maybe you'll catch up with me on here sometime soon and uh, we'll maybe catch some more to show you. Be lucky if you're out there and I hope your next fish is your target.